It's time for Around the Ozarks in 5, brought to you by Talking Rocks Cavern. Explore the beauty above and below ground at Talking Rocks Cavern. And the Springfield Green County Park Board, reminding you to go play. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Foreheads. Here we are again. It is Wednesday. Good morning to you. Hope you're having a great week so far. We're at the midway point, so this is critical. Yes. You go either way. Today. Yes, yes. And interesting weather today as well. So uh, here's a look at the news, though. Springfield voters overwhelmingly said yes to an additional tax on all recreational marijuana sales. That means an additional 3% sales tax on recreational marijuana on top of the 6% state tax. The revenue from the tax is said to be used for, quote, public safety, mental health services, housing and substance abuse services. Also, both the city of Branson and Taney County, as well as the city of Buffalo and Dallas County, and many others in the Ozarks, really all over the Ozarks, passed the same type of attacks as well, easily, yeah. um, in most of those cases. Kind of saw that coming. Uh, meanwhile, whether Missourians will see the issue of abortion on November's 2024 ballot remains to be seen. Another lawsuit has been filed challenging the cost and the language on the ballot. This is now the third lawsuit challenging uh, surrounding, I guess, abortions in the state and it going to the ballot. At issue, what is the real financial impact if the state allows abortions? And also how should the ballot language read? Uh, Because they sound very different in the two proposed so far, because of course, uh, each side wants to use its own language. So now a judge will hear the case in Cole County in September. Okay. And the language we know very different from one side to the other, the way that they would refer. Yeah, to at least at this point. I mean, it's still early because there still has to be signatures and all the yeah. stuff. But uh, City of Springfield wants to invest more than twenty-seven million dollars to make improvements at its sports complexes. Actually, only fourteen million would be local taxpayer funds. The other thirteen and a half million would be federal COVID relief money which is still being handed out. Uh, Improvements to Cooper and Killian sports complexes would be transformational, according to Park Board Director uh, Bob Belote. They would include new artificial turf fields for 19 soccer, baseball, and softball fields at Cooper. Uh, So it's up for a vote before the city council on August 21st. Uh, And we'll see what happens there. But, you know, we, we travel a lot now with our kids playing soccer our, our boy plays soccer so i'm in kansas city a lot st louis a lot and these these turf fields are what they play on it's become the norm everywhere you go so it is the next phase of uh athletic fields uh especially if you want to draw people to town for for uh for tournaments right well and even locally they have competition now with yeah. the betty and bobby allison sports complex sports town sports town yeah so yeah. it's interesting because it's a lot of money it's taxpayer money but also, yes. It brings in a lot of money because people we, coming. I travel almost every weekend in the fall and the spring wah, wah, and wah. spend a lot of money in Kansas City and in St. Louis. Uh, so it'll be great to, to have yeah. the opportunity. Here. Listen, you know, if I'm going to get excited about any new facility, it's going to be an indoor 50 meter swimming pool. Okay. Well, that's still in the works, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you could lobby for that, which you've done successfully maybe here. I don't know. Uh, speaking of working out, the YMCA is getting a new downtown Springfield home. It comes just months after, you'll recall, the YMCA closed and then sold down its 110-year-old downtown home. That's how old the building was. Yeah. Uh, the new location will be at 323 North Patton Street, just north and west of Park Central Square. That's so- interesting. I gotta. Uh, I can't, like, I need to go into that building to see... To see it you've seen in my it mind's eye, but I'm sure I have. Yeah, yeah. You've seen it before. Um, all right, now to this. Springfield's newest fire station, station number 13, has been up and running for a few months, but the city just held an official dedication. Firefighters began using the $3.7 million station back in March. It is located on West College Street near Lexington. Okay. All right, Sunrise Beach. Folks, listen up. City Hall is reeling from the resignation of three of its governmental leaders. The city clerk, the deputy clerk, and the public works clerk have all resigned in the last couple weeks. Sunrise Beach is now in the process of trying to find their replacements. Yeah, that's a lot to do in a short amount of time. Uh, We told you yesterday about Tyson closing four chicken plants in Missouri and in Arkansas combined. 
Uh, now, this is something, Smithfield Foods, who we've all heard of, the world's largest pork processor, is closing 35 Missouri hog farm, farms. 35. Uh, that means more than 90 jobs will be lost, just like that. Uh, it's permanently closing farms in Newtown, Lucerne, and Princeton, Missouri, and as they uh, are also trying to cut costs. We've done a lot of stories about companies trying to cut costs. Yellow was one of them, and, and uh, Tyson. Tyson, and, and yeah. now, yes. And, now and food producers, yikes. Yeah, it's a little bit frightening when you see all those going away. Uh, we told you about that new development coming to Republic. Uh, we now know the first restaurant signed up to be there. The Roost Bar and Grill will open up inside the $65 million Iron Grain District. That development will offer amenities, uh, it will offer apartments, retail, restaurant space as well. It should open up next spring, and if you're wondering where that is, it is right across from Amazon's big fulfillment center. It'll be very close to Convoy of Hope's uh, new world headquarters that are go going in there and, and will open up in the next couple of months yeah. as well. I've actually not been to the roost. I have yeah, plenty have, of friends who've been there and, and really enjoy it. But they have yeah. uh, at least one on Sunshine, I know. There may be others as well. Um, all right. This is interesting. Walnut Lawn Funeral Home is getting into pet funerals. Uh, in fact, it's building a brand new facility to focus solely on the relationship between man and man's best friend. The new facility will offer a chapel, cremation, visitation rooms, as well as a prayer garden, urns, and caskets. Um, this is what really is fascinating. Listen, the global pet funeral services market was valued at $1.6 billion last year. And growing and growing. You know, it's such a, man, it's so personal to lose a pet because, they, you know, dogs are man's best friend and cats are good too, I guess. <laughs> but, but it's so personal to you whenever you lose a pet that you want to do something to remember the pet and people have different ways of doing that obviously but a lot of people are willing to spend money to put them in a grave yeah. that's with a marker and all of that sort of thing i often run by the pet cemetery yeah. on the greenway trail also interestingly uh speaking of pets my running group and i were talking just the other day about how more hotels and mm -hmm. like airbnbs and the likes are now allowing pets right. without such steep cost attached to it because there's more competition. Um, and so it's interesting because I don't know if more people got pets during COVID. I think that was a thing. Like we did stories on that, I think, but um, I don't know. I feel like you're either a pet family or you're not, you know? And so it's just interesting. I think for a lot of families more now more than ever is that the, the pet is part of the family, like an active part of the family. Right. Whereas you take them on vacation with you, which we have now done. Yeah. We took the dog to Colorado last year. And it was a success. Mr. Forehats was nervous. I he was didn't want to do it. Thrilled about it. And I was like, what is the problem? We can do this. We can do hard things. And we did. And it was great. Yeah. I mean, it, it worked. I don't know. Great is a stretch. It was great. I, I took her running at like 4.30 in the morning before we went out and about for the day. She was living her best life. I got her nice and worn out for the day, and then she slept all day. Is that what happened? Exactly. You, you know that's what happened yeah, while she we did, were gone. She, she did not freak out wondering freak where out. she is nope. and where we are? Nope. Okay. She then was it, an angel. Then it all went swimmingly well. It did. It did. Um, <laughs> swimmingly well. All right. This is our last story. Uh, tomorrow, as we have been reminding you, is the beginning of the birthplace of Route 66 Festival in downtown Springfield. It starts at six o'clock. Uh, we've been highlighting different things that are going to be happening there. And this is a fun one uh, for all you Kansas City Chiefs fan, yeah. uh, fans. You can now see the Lombardi Trophy there at the festival. Uh, there are three opportunities essentially to do so on Friday. So this is it. From 4 to 6 at the Springfield Expo Center. By the way, doors open at 3.30 for the rally there featuring the trophy, the Kingdom Cruiser double-decker bus, Chiefs cheerleaders, the Rumble Drumline, and the Chiefs mascot, Casey Wolf, and more. Also on Friday, starting at 6.30 p.m., you can watch the trophy ride by in the parade um, along College Street from Grant Avenue to Jefferson Avenue. 
the Kingdom Cruiser bus is going to carry the Lombardi Trophy on it during that parade. And then lastly, on Friday at 7 uh, on the Aaron Sachs stage at the corner of Jefferson and McDaniel, the cheerleaders and drumline will perform and give the public one last chance to see it. Okay, well, there are lots of options then, aren't there? All on Friday and kind of back to back to back. So do you want to go to the Expo Center? Do you want to watch it ride by in the parade? Or do you want to go to the Aaron Sachs Wave stage and the, just get a glimpse? Wave at the Wave. trophy as it drives by. I, it might throw candy at you. I don't know. Um, anyway, it is kind of cool. That's and, exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. Fans, absolutely. And uh, I mean, honestly, I do love the festival. It, it really is a fun one. It's cool to see all the awesome cars. And um, we told you about the talent show. Ethan's going to be. All kinds of stuff. I'm sure. A star. A star, always. Oh, is that what you're yeah. okay. um, we're also celebrating one year of Around the Ozarks in five. We're thrilled to be doing the podcast now for more than a year, which is crazy to talk about and think. Uh, but we're giving away a $100 uh, gift card for Jim's Steakhouse, which that's a pretty nice gift. It's good. It's tasty. It's I've been there a couple it's times, a actually, on Glenstone. Uh, if you go to AroundTheOzarks.com and subscribe to our podcast you can enter for your chance to win that $100 gift card. And uh, yeah, happy anniversary to us. That's exciting. And it's all because you have made it a success. Um, we were kind of given it a year to see if it took off and it did. So thanks. Um, tune in and also uh, share with your friends if you can help us out. Let them know. Um, you can find us on Facebook, of course, and then on any social media platform, but also we are on all podcast platforms. So mm -hmm. if you have um, wherever you get podcasts onto your cell phone, be it Apple or Android, we are there in the app store. And so. you can listen on those platforms, but on Facebook, you can watch the video as well because we're recording this. We're on camera right now. Except for it's, there's nothing to see here. <laughs> nothing, to, nothing to see here. We're away. So this is what we're dealing with. Yeah. Uh, but we'll be back uh, at our normal spot on Monday morning. Uh, but yeah, you can. Uh, you have the option of watching. You can just listen if you like. It's up to you. And we've now added Abby Dyer to the podcast family. Uh, and today's a good day to check out her podcast immediately no following this one. Hers is Wake Up Weather with meteorologist Abby Dyer. You want to find out what's going to happen today because there's a chance that a lot could happen. Yes, no doubt. So check it out. And thank you so much for your time. We hope you have a great Wednesday. Indeed we do. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye. It's time for Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather. Here's your host, Abby Dyer. And welcome to your Wednesday morning. We got a lot going on in the weather world today. So thank you for listening to Wake Up Weather this morning. Many of you waking up to showers and thunderstorms this morning already today. A one-two punch in the forecast. I have two different rounds of rain and storms, both of which could slow you down and even bring us some severe weather to the Ozark. So we're going to dive right into the forecast today. There is a lot to talk about. The rain and storm activity that's on the radar already, it's powerful. Very heavy downpours. Those can be expected through the morning drive time, I think through the mid-morning hours, and perhaps even lasting until lunch in many locations. A second round of showers and thunderstorms will then be possible as we head into the afternoon hours. But the storms take the headlines for your Wednesday temperature forecast. It's a tough one today because of the rain and storms that may linger around. I also have kind of a break in between the storms, so we might have some opportunity to warm up. But I think for the most part today, we're heading to the mid 80s for highs, low 80s if you stay underneath the storms and the rain showers at most of the day. Check out the headlines here. Two rounds of severe weather possible, all modes of severe weather possible here today. That includes the risk for heavy downpours like what we're already seeing this morning. Gusty winds in excess of 60 miles an hour. Some hail is going to be possible today. And there's even a low end chance for some tornadic activity. So no matter where you're heading, make sure you know what your safety plan is uh, wherever you are this afternoon. We have morning storms that are already bringing heavy rain that's going to persist. So already we're seeing some of the ponding on the roadways. Slow it down this morning. If you're driving, remember headlights on if you have any rain falling at all, because we have widespread rain and storms, and they're going to be pretty persistent here through at least the lunch hour in many places. Then we might get a few hours of a break. Noon to four, looking like the dry time across the Ozarks for the most part. 
But we're then we have another chance for rain and storms that develops for us as we head into the evening hours. Another round coming in this evening, and that one could also pack a punch. In fact, if we get a significant amount of dry time and our temperatures heat up, that's actually really not good news for us in the Ozarks because it will allow energy to build. It'll make that second round of storms powerful too. And once again, by this afternoon and evening, we could be talking about storms with the potential for all modes of severe weather. I do expect that the round that comes through Wednesday evening will be more isolated in nature. This morning, the radar pretty widespread with some of the rainfall that's out there. Southern Ozarks probably have the best chance for the second round of rain and storms. And I'm thinking that we see the storms kind of linger around through sunset tonight and we'll then watch them move on out of here for the overnight hours. Then as we head into the weekend forecast, the story is that it's going to get warmer again, back to the 90s in the forecast. And I also have the potential for some scattered showers and a few thunderstorms in the forecast, even as we head to the weekend. But it's not a washout of a weekend. These are just kind of pop-up showers and thunderstorms, nothing that's going to rain you out all weekend long. The forecast for today, well, in Springfield, I'm saying 82 degrees, and that's because we hold on to some of the cloud cover, the rain showers. We have those few hours of dry time. Highs could make it as high as the mid 80s, but I'm going 82 for the high temperature forecast today. Numbers, well, they're going to be on the cool side of average, but that's because I think we have two rounds of rain. As soon as we get rid of some of the rain chances in the forecast, we see those numbers skyrocket again for the rest of the week. In fact, we're back to the mid 80s tomorrow. We've got high temperatures pushing 90 by Friday, and I think we're in the low 90s for the weekend forecast. I have an opportunity for some rain and storms Friday, Saturday, Sunday, even Monday, but I'm not putting it on the icon on the extended forecast here because it's not a great chance for rain. Like I said, these are not washout days for the weekend. Today is really the day where I think we have rain on the radar for most of the afternoon. Friday and Sunday, it's going to be about a 20 or 30% chance for rain. And then we're done with it. We can leave those behind as we head into the early part of next week. Around the country, weather still making headlines today. Record heat still possible from Texas all the way to the Gulf Coast. We've also got fire weather back in the headlines. It's almost fire season across the country, and there is a risk for wildfires today from the Great Basin back into the central southwestern portion of Texas. High fire danger there. Of course, they've been dealing with the drought conditions, the gusty winds, and the dry air that persists for them today. There's also headlines coming out of Hawaii that don't expire until this morning of high wind. There are a lot of high wind warnings, red flag warnings, and surf warnings all along the Hawaiian islands. Uh, There's some tropical activity about 600 miles from the coast, but heavy winds because of the weather pattern set up out for our friends in Hawaii. If you or your family are out there right now, boy. It looks very windy. You're probably going to hear about that in some of the national headlines. All right. It is time for the brain twister question this morning. I will show you yesterday's question. I saw many of you taking a guess over on the Around the Ozarks Facebook page. Here's the question again. What mammal has the longest pregnancy? And the options were A, humans, B, elephants, C, hippopotamuses, or D, giraffes. And a lot of people knew this. I did not know this until researching this question, but I guess it makes sense. Uh, The answer is B, elephants. And on average, an elephant's pregnancy, this is an African elephant, 645 days, which just seems cruel, a couple years uh, of pregnancy. Uh, And that's one of the reasons is because they're the largest, you know, land mammal. Um, Whales interestingly, are actually a shorter gestational period, 480 to 590 days, so still entirely too long. And then it goes down the list. Pretty much large animals have the longest pregnancies. Rhinoceroses, 450 days. Giraffes, 420 days. And um, alpacas, 335 days. So God bless them. That's a long time to be pregnant. Uh, As we head into tomorrow, let me give you a preview of the weather quiz question for you. The brain twister is, which of these is not a real job? Do you think it is A, an elf whisperer, B, a scuba diving pizza delivery man, C, wildfowl buoyancy tester, 
or D, a professional mourner? I know you're dying to know, but you might have a guess. Uh, so take your guess over on the Around the Ozarks Facebook page. Thank you for listening this morning. I sure appreciate it. And I really hope everyone pays attention to the weather forecast today. Stay safe from those showers and thunderstorms. We've got you covered up to the minute with weather details all day long over on AroundTheOzarks.com. So check that out there. Thanks for listening. And I will chat with you in the morning.